The Carp by Marie Yuen Long ago in Japan, there lived a boy named Rosetsu, who dreamed of becoming a painter. Not just any painter, but the greatest painter in all of Japan. Rosetsu's mother and father scraped and saved every penny so Rosetsu could attend art school. When the time came, Rosetsu kissed his parents goodbye and headed down the road to Kyoto, home of the famous Mariyama School, where Rosetsu hoped to study with the master painter Mariyama Okyo. Under the guidance of this brilliant sensei, teacher, Rosetsu might learn to be a master painter himself. Rosetsu had a long walk ahead of him, but his heart was filled with joy and excitement. This is the way my future lies, he said to himself as he walked along the dusty road. He paused to watch a sparrow flying overhead and whistled softly to the bird as it soared over the treetops and out of sight. Making ink, preparing paper and silk, and learning the proper way to hold a brush will be bliss, and what paintings I shall create when I have learned all I have to learn from my sensei. Rosetsu said. By now it was midday, so Rosetsu found a shady spot to eat his lunch beside the Katsura River. As he ate, he watched two turtles sunbathe on a nearby log. Just as Rosetsu finished his lunch, an elderly man, grey-bearded and bent from years of toil, appeared before him. Without so much as a hello, the man shook his crooked walking stick at Rosetsu and demanded, Who are you, and what do you want? My name is Rosetsu, and I want to go to Kyoto so I can study at the feet of Sensei Mariyama Okyo and become a great painter, Rosetsu replied. What makes you think you can be a great painter? asked the man. When I dream at night, that is what I am. Hmm, it's a mystery how you can become a painter when you don't even have a painting brush, replied the man, nodding and stroking his beard. Rosetsu's eyes widened, and he asked, How did you know that I have no brush? The man seemed not to have heard Rosetsu. Let's see how you do without one. Paint a picture for me. Without a brush, or ink, or paper, or silk? Long ago, painters worked without any of these, the man answered. If you are meant to be a painter, prove it now to quell the doubts inside you. But I have no doubts about... Yes, you do. Rosetsu looked around in a panic until his eyes landed on a nearby tree. He broke off a twig and picked off a few berries mashing and mixing them to form a kind of ink, and then he peeled off a piece of pale bark to paint on. With a few strokes of the twig, Rosetsu painted a picture of a sparrow and two turtles, and then he handed it to the stranger. The man stared at the painting in silence as Rosetsu nervously drew circles in the dirt with his foot. Suddenly, the stranger clapped Rosetsu on the back and announced, you, young man, are a painter, one destined to paint pictures more wondrous than the world has ever seen. Thank you, Rosetsu said, a smile spreading the width of his face. Then he remembered where he was going, and that he had many miles to walk before he reached Kyoto, so he bowed and said, Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be on my way. Not before I give you this replied the man, and suddenly, as if from thin air, he produced a painting brush, old and worn and nothing to look at, and placed it in Rosetsu's hand. Rosetsu didn't want to hurt the stranger's feelings, so he smiled and thanked him, and he put the brush in his pack. Then he said goodbye to the stranger and continued on his journey. By the time Rosetsu arrived in Kyoto, it was nearly evening, and he worried the school would be closed. 
he was relieved to arrive at the gate and see the gatekeeper dozing there. The boy coughed loudly and then announced, I am Rosetsu. I have come to see Sensei Okyo. It has long been my dream to learn from the Sensei. One day I hope to become a great painter like him. The gatekeeper yawned, rubbed his eyes, and then said, That is a noble dream, my boy. But what if the Sensei does not want to teach you? This idea had never crossed Rosetsu's mind. Then I would plead with him to reconsider, he replied. I know he is a generous man, and when he hears my dream, he will surely take me on as his student. Hmm, said the gatekeeper, furrowing his brow. How long have you been painting? Rosetsu's heart beat faster as he responded. Not long, sir, but I am eager to learn. I also have a brush. As Rosetsu pulled the painting brush from his pack, the gatekeeper stared at it, his face reddening. Where did you get this brush? he demanded. Did you steal it? No, cried Rosetsu. I met a stranger on my way to Kyoto. He told me to paint a picture, and then he gave me the brush. Did he tell you his name? No, I have no idea who he was. The gatekeeper laughed and replied, I now know you didn't steal this painting brush, because you don't know its owner or its true worth. The brush once belonged to my own sensei, the great Ishida Utei. Ishida Utei? Rosetsu repeated, his eyes widening. He taught Sensei Okyo. Yes, I am Sensei Maruyama Okyo, and the stranger you met on your way here was Sensei Utei. If my Sensei gave you this brush, he must think highly of you indeed. Of course you will be admitted to Maruyama's school. Here is your brush. Keep it safe so that one day, after proving yourself worthy, you will be ready to paint with it. Thank you, Sensei, cried Rosetsu. Rosetsu began to work and study in Sensei Okyo's studio. He started by preparing ink, paper and silks for painting, and learning to care for and repair brushes. Each morning he eagerly awoke in hopes that he'd be found worthy enough to paint with Sensei Ute's brush, and every night he told himself, soon, soon. Three years passed quickly. Rosetsu worked and studied, but he didn't make as much progress as he'd like. As his classmates finished school and went on to become great painters, Rosetsu was left behind. He often felt discouraged and full of self-doubt. One day, when Rosetsu was grinding more ink for class, he heard two students speaking in the hall. Rosetsu has never completed a painting, not even once, one student said, adding, it must be because he is missing something, like talent or taste. Sensei Okyo is very hard on Rosetsu, much harder than he is on the rest of us, the other student said. I think he's disappointed that Rosetsu will never be great. As the sound of their footsteps died away down the hall, Rosetsu was flooded with embarrassment and shame. He packed up his belongings and ran out of the school, relieved to escape into the cold winter night. He trudged through the snow for hours with no thought to his destination. Finally, when he could walk no more, he collapsed into a snowbank beneath some pine trees, where he burrowed under the snow and fell asleep. The sun was overhead by the time Rosetsu awoke. As he shook the snow off, he heard a loud splashing nearby. Soon he found the source. A giant carp was jumping wildly in the middle of a half-frozen pond. Just out of reach on the ice lay a senbei, a sweet, salty Japanese cracker. Rosetsu watched the carp as it twisted and turned and tried all sorts of tactics to reach the senbei. 
He marveled at the carp's determination. Each time the fish jumped, it broke a tiny bit of the ice and moved closer to its prize. Morning passed, noon came and went, and the sun began to sink. Yet the bruised and exhausted carp still did not give up. Finally, with one last leap, the fish broke through the remaining bit of ice between it and the sembe, grasped its hard one treat in its mouth, and swam away. Rosetsu laughed and clapped, cheered by the carp's spirit and determination. If I am to succeed, Rosetsu said to himself, I must be just like that carp, determined, persistent, and unwilling to give up. I'll ask Sensei Okyo how I can become worthy of Sensei Utai's brush, and then I'll persevere until I gain my prize. Rosetsu returned to the Mariyama school with a fire in his belly and a gleam in his eyes. The next day he was granted permission to meet privately with Sensei Okyo. I must know why I have been kept behind these three years, when all my classmates have surpassed me, Rosetsu said. Have I been careless with my work? No, the sensei replied. You are a conscientious worker, but your own doubts have held you back. A great painter doesn't abandon his paintings halfway through for fear they won't be good enough. You must believe in your own talents if you want others to do so. Rosetsu said, So you don't think I am without talent? Had you no talent, I wouldn't have accepted you in the first place. Did not Sensei Ute give you his brush? Yes, Rosetsu said. He smiled and bowed. Thank you, Sensei. I shall do my best every day from now on, and soon, I hope, I will be ready to use my brush. Rosetsu studied and worked harder than ever, and he completed many paintings, each one more dazzling than the last. After another year passed, his skills and knowledge were almost equal to those of Sensei Okyo. Then came the glorious day he was allowed to paint with Sensei Ute's brush. His choice of subject matter? It was a carp, of course, in honour of that one that inspired him to persist no matter what. And so it was that Rosetsu became not only one of Sensei Okyo's best pupils, but one of Japan's greatest painters of all time.